Friday morning. This is 106.1 KYVZ Radio. Joe Vazurik visiting once again with meteorologist Chris Schramick at Decision Weather Now, as well as America's Weather Streaming Channel. Chris, one thing's for certain, we're going to see some strong winds over the next 24 hours or so. Yeah, Joe, we got a deep leading trough out to the west, and that uh, high pressure over the mountains is going to kind of just fall apart today. And as that trough and low pressure comes over the Rockies tomorrow, it's going to be about a 990 millibar low uh, there in the morning. But then when it swings across northwestern Kansas, the tri-state area, it really tightens up. These southeasterly winds out ahead of it will start increasing today and just pick up intensity tonight and tomorrow. And then when that moves through here about 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, all that stuff will turn around to the west and then northwest on Sunday and continue to gust. Currently, computer models are showing gusts anywhere starting tonight through the day on Sunday of 50 upwards to 70 miles per hour. So that's going to be dangerous level winds just with the winds themselves and blowing dust and tie down everything because we could have lots of wind issues. We also have today a red flag warning with this increase in winds this afternoon of 20 to 30 miles per hour. By the end or late period of the afternoon towards evening, they could be gusting 40 to 45 and then picking up this evening to 50, 55. And the strongest winds look like they'll be around midnight through early tomorrow morning on this front side. Uh, Then on Sunday, when that air comes back around Sunday morning, we could see another surge of those winds at that 40, 50, 60, 70 mile an hour clip there on Sunday. Temperature wise, we'll warm up to 78 this afternoon. We do have that red flag warning. It'll be in place for areas west of a St. Francis to Oakley line. Tonight's lows will drop to around 45. Uh, Tomorrow, we'll warm into 60. That front and dry line will push through about 1 p.m. Looks like showers and thunderstorms will form from about Benkelman to Greenfield and then lift north and east through the evening. That will be the area where we could see the severe storms. Uh, They would have large hail, damaging winds. and and the potential for a little bit localized heavy rain up in Nebraska. But for the most part, that it looks like the area is just to our north and east with that severe weather potential for Saturday. Uh, As far as rainfall goes with this, most of the activity will be to our north in Nebraska. We'll be kind of dry slotted in northwest Kansas. You get along Highway 36 to 34, you might pick up a quarter inch. You get north of Highway 34 in Nebraska, you could be half inch, three quarter, an inch type amounts where some of those storms will roll through and then have more wraparound precipitation. Uh, Sunday morning, low temperatures will be right around 32. It is forecasting snow to be out in that wraparound in northeast Colorado. So areas in western Yuma County and I-70 from Stratton or more likely that Flagler area to Denver or down the Palmer Divide could have one to four inches of blowing snow there Sunday morning. So that's another issue or travel concern that we'll have to watch out there in Colorado. Uh, Once we get through the weekend and this activity and this low pressure gets out of here, it moves off east of Omaha Sunday night, uh, then we'll be looking towards another system. They're coming over the Rockies for Tuesday, but it's taking a south route through Oklahoma and Texas, bringing the rain and thunderstorm activity maybe to Dodge City, Wichita, down in those areas. And that'll also do the eclipse on Monday. What does that do for us? Well, that is going right where the total eclipse path is there in Texas and Oklahoma, that Tuesday system. So there'll be some increase of clouds, some rain on Monday afternoon. For us, Monday will be partly cloudy. Right now, it's showing about 50% cloud coverage for the day on Monday. We could, at times right, start clearing there late morning, that early afternoon period, the peak is supposed to be around 146. So if we do get some clearing and some partially cloudy skies uh, there in the afternoon, we would see a 73.5 totality of an eclipse around that 145 p.m. So uh, I know people have been asking about that. That's kind of where we're at now. If you want to go see the 100% totality, you're probably going to have to go to northern Arkansas, to St. Louis in that area where you'll get out of the cloud cover and the rain chances it'll be to the south. Once again, that's Chris Sharmick at Decision Weather and Atwood as well as America's Weather Streaming Channel for 106.1 KYVZ Radio. I'm Joe Vizuric.